Hey, welcome back. We're talking about in solids today, shear strain. This one's kind of confusing, I have to say. So what is shear strain? Let me give you a little example here, okay? I'm gonna draw my, my slinky, okay? I'm gonna draw a straight line on my slinky. Okay, I hope you can see this. It's kind of not very bright. Okay. So what I've done is I've drawn an L on my slinky here, okay? But if I apply a force on the bottom one direction and a force on the top going the other direction, what happens to my slinky? As I push on that, okay, that deforms. And again, you're talking about all of these little planes of a slinky, one plane sliding relative to the next. And what you get is this shearing deformation. This is called shear strain. And that angle that started out at 90 degrees, but is now something less than 90 degrees is called theta, okay? And that angle is here, okay? So theta always starts off at 90 degrees and it ends up something less than 90 degrees when you have shear strain, right? So that angle there would be uh, less than 90 degrees. And again, think about those planes sliding across each other like the uh, each plane is one of the levels or the layers in my slinky here, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so shear strain is given by the Greek letter gamma, which my students call dead fish, okay? <laughs> and so it's also in radians. Shear strain is always a number in radians, so it's going to be a really little number, okay? How do you find it? Well, it's just pi over 2. Hey, that's 90 degrees, right? And remember what I just drew on there. I started off at 90 degrees, and then as it strained, it's something less than 90, okay? So it's, it's pi over 2 minus whatever the new angle is, okay? So I'm going to show you on this element, okay? So this here's my slinky, right? We started off with a square, and then some forces got applied to it, and it's just deformed all like crazy, right? So this thing is like stretched this way and stretched that way. And so point A is still at point A. Point C is now over here. We'll call this C prime. And we'll call this up here B prime. And we'll call this guy over here D prime. Okay. Now the one thing that's really kind of confusing is this, is the signs of shear strain, right? What is it? Is it positive or is it negative? At corner A, if it decreases, it's a positive. I know it seems like if every time it decreases, it ought to be a negative, right? But it's not. At corner A, if corner A increases, it's a negative, okay? But it's not always, the tr always true. But here's what is always true. This, okay? This is the sign convention for these shear strain problems. We can call it the shear strain sh sign convention, okay? Shear strain. Oh, that's how you spell it. The shear strain sign convention, okay? So the way you do this is if you move this, this, this little coordinate system to your new number, which would be like A prime, B prime, C prime, move this. So if I move that over here and I put it on top of C prime, right? And here it is. Here's that, that coordinate system, okay? Like that. This, this uh, deflected side here, right? has increased into quadrant one, okay? Now what we call that is, there's our little, there's our little uh, gamma that we're looking for, okay? It's 90 minus theta, which leaves you with gamma, doesn't it, right? So that gamma, is it gonna be positive or negative? Well, it's gone into quadrant one, and quadrant one is a positive, right? So if it decreases into an odd quadrant, it's positive, if it's decreasing into an even quadrant, it's negative. So let's see if we can calculate what the shear strain is at corner A, at corner C, corner B, corner D. The rest of it is pretty simple. The hardest thing about this is what's the sign convention? The rest of it, just dirt easy, right? Because all you have to do is find an angle in radians. That's it. Okay? So for this kind of thing, the easiest thing to do, I'll tell you what the easiest thing to do would be, let me see if I can turn my calculator on. I don't really know how to do this in this calculator, uh, but I want to go from degrees in my calculator. I like leaving my calculator in degrees, but for this, it might be handy if we switched it into radians. 
So on my 36 Pro, it's kind of easy. You just click on mode and then you just go degrees, the very first option. I think I'll take radians, thank you very much. So now I'm in radians. Now I gotta be careful because next problem I'll work, I'm gonna be in radians and it's gonna be all hosed up, but here we go. So let's start off with corner A, right? What is gamma A gonna be? Okay, corner A. Well, at corner A, what? It went from 90 degrees, it went bigger. So again, if I put my little coordinate system over here, right? I'm now in, in uh, quadrant number two. So gamma A is gonna be negative. Here's gamma A right here. Okay, there it is. So what is gamma A? Well, it's this little triangle. Now this block originally was 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Okay, so what is this side here now? This side is uh, 63, so I've got this triangle that looks like this now. Okay, it's very skinny, isn't it? It's 63 millimeters tall, and then this top part of the little triangle is two millimeters across there. So gamma XY is just, or gamma for corner A, is just this little angle right here, okay? So how about um, two, divided by 63, enter uh, inverse tan, whoa, clear. Inverse tan of that equals, and this is in radians, right? Point zero three one seven, okay? Radians, there's no units on that, right? You can put rads out there if you want to, rad man. And is that going to be positive or negative? It's in an even quadrant. It is negative. Okay. So there's one. Okay. Let's talk about corner C. Let's do C. Okay. So gamma C. Okay. I'm going to make this little triangle right here, right? Okay. This little triangle uh, is how tall is this triangle, right? I'm, I'm making, I'm talking about this little triangle right here. Well, that triangle is um, 65 tall, right? Here he is, 65 tall. And the top up there, the whole thing is three. That's one, so the leftover bit must be two, right? So again, there, here's my gamma that I'm looking for. So it's gonna be two divided by 65 equals, inverse 10 equals, uh, same answer, right? Point uh, zero three zero seven six. Okay, radians. Now that one is going into quadrant one, isn't it? I relocate my little my little coordinate system here. It's going into quadrant one. And quadrant one, quadrant one's a positive, isn't it? So positive. Okay, there's C. Okay, how about quadrant, or, or corner B rather? D, D. Okay, now D has, D has two, doesn't he? Okay, because look here. Okay, D has two. When I say two, I mean two triangles, okay? It has, D is gonna be composed of this gamma, I'll call it gamma one, and this gamma, which I'll call gamma two, right? It used to be 90 degrees, now it's something less than, or something more than 90 degrees, right? And so, uh, what is this guy? All right? So, again, here's my little coordinate system, okay? So, this leg here, right, is in quadrant, quadrant four, which is going to be a negative. So, this guy, gamma one, is going to be negative. And gamma two is in quadrant one, he's gonna be positive, right? So this, and, and it's just some triangles, isn't it? Okay, so this is, a, this is D, so gamma D is equal to, all right, let's see. <coughs> gamma one we said was gonna be negative, yes. So it's gonna equal gamma to one, ne negative gamma one plus gamma two. Okay, you get that? Because this one's in quadrant four, that one's in quadrant one, okay? So let's do gamma two. Gamma two 
is a little triangle that's, oh my goodness, how long is this guy? Well, that's five and that's three. So that little height there is two. Okay, so I've got a triangle that looks like this. This is two. And then what is the width of that triangle? Uh, this is a three plus 60 plus two more. So three plus 60 plus two more is 65, isn't it? Well, that's going to be, we just did that one, right? Two by 65, that was 0 0.03076. Well, that's gamma one, no two. Okay, and we said that that guy was going to be, gamma two was going to be positive. Okay, so we'll put that down here. Plus 0 0.03076. Now we need to find gamma one. So gamma one is this triangle here. So this is two and the height is 60 plus three. So that triangle is like this, 63 and two, right? So here's gamma two right there. So let's see, opposite two divided by 63 and then inverse 10. All right, so that one's negative 0 0.03173, okay? So gamma D is equal to, um, this guy divide, no, minus, this guy, which is 0 0.12341068, right? There's gamma D. Okay? And B is going to be the same thing. B, two triangles. I got one here, okay? And one here, and I'll call, I'll call this triangle here, I'll call it gamma three, and I'll call this triangle gamma, or it's not gamma, four, right? Okay, and what's this one gonna be? Here's my coordinate system. Okay, so this one, is, they're both going into quadrant three, aren't they? This one goes into quadrant three. That one goes into quadrant three. Quadrant three is positive, so they're both gonna be positive. They're gonna to add to each other, aren't they? Okay, so corner D, no B, corner B is gonna be gamma three plus gamma four, okay? And again, we gotta make ourselves some triangles here. So this one is three plus 60 plus two, that's 65. And, and uh, on this side over here is five minus three, it's two. Did we have that one yet? Uh, yeah, we did. There it is up there, right? So it's 0 0.03076 for this guy. That was number four, 0 0.03076 radians. And then triangle for this guy over here is going to be what? 65 by what? Uh, let's see. By three, isn't it? By three. Okay. So three divided by 65 equals inverse 10 equals 0.04612. So add that to plus 0 0.03076. Whoa, I didn't do that right. 0 0.04612 plus 0 0.03076 equals uh, gamma B equals 0 0.07688 positive. Okay, 
So the, the get figuring the little triangles, that's easy. Finding the deflections and all that stuff and radians, that's easy. The hardest part is what the heck are the signs at the corners? And if you'll follow my little sign convention trick here, um, it's it'll it'll help you a whole lot. I think it'll be a lot easier, okay? So I hope this clears up sheer strain and gets you the right signs. This is not very well discussed in the book, so I hope this explanation is a little better. I'll see you next video.